I'm laughing because somebody went, here we go. Oh. God, we bless you. We come. We come as your children. We come as your own. What an honor and a privilege to worship on your throne, to be called into your presence as your own. What an honor the lion has roared. Who will not fear? God has spoken who can but prophesy. God, meet us in this moment. Speak a word to our hearts. Shift and change us by your spirit. That we will never be the same. This is my earnest prayer in the name of Jesus and all that's holy. And the people of God said, Amen and thank God. Reading in your hearing, or it should be up somewhere by now, Philippians 1. Paul's letter to the church at Philippi while he was imprisoned in Rome. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that the one who begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You may be seated. God bless the reading of this word. How y'all doing, St. John's? I just want to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom I serve out of a glad heart. I love you all very much. I love Pastor Rudy and Pastor Juanita. They are a blessing to me in ways that they don't even know. I said this morning, I say again, they're on my BB list my before breakfast prayer list, that group of people that I pray for and talk to God about before I do anything about my stomach. I said to Sister Prathea, she is now on that list. I, I, I just believe that something happens when we pray. I believe that that is a part of the partnership that we bring to God is when we give our lives over, not just about what's important to us, not even just about what's our call, but the thing that God is doing in the earth by all of our hands. How about we're not in this thing by ourselves? I know you may not feel like that sometimes. Sometimes we feel like we're in it all by ourselves. It's all about us. Woe is me. Oh, my God. We do the Elijah thing, sit under the tree, the broom tree, and say, I'm the only one left. Sometimes we feel like. It's just us. But there is a partnership in the mind of God that happens between God and God's people. And we get to participate in it in the ways in which we care for one another and the ways in which we say yes to God about the thing that God is doing in our life. Anybody know what I'm talking about up in here? This text where Paul is in prison you would think that from prison, he's not having very much impact. You would think, what can somebody in prison do? You would probably think he's not so good of a minister. But there he is in prison writing letters, many of which we read today. And we think they were personally written to us. But Paul, imprisoned, was writing about the thing that God was doing. Hands tied, feet bound, and he was being effective in the reign of God because he was saying yes to God in that moment by writing letters of encouragement encouragement and by praying for the people of God this is why when people say to me who am I and what can I do I will never be a Paul and I'll never be a Peter I think you don't know the Bible very much because what Paul did most of the time was write letters and pray 
chains, yes, but not bound by the chains of the world. Chained, yes, but not bound by the chains of the world. This text where Paul writes about how much he loves the people of God and he begins to talk about what it would be for them to be in partnership with God, what it would look like if they would just agree with God and if they would just trust that what God has begun, God would complete. God who has begun the work in you is faithful to complete it. The work, he says, belongs not to you but to God. The work, your work, should you decide to accept it, your mission, should you decide to accept it, your work is to partner with God, to say yes to the thing that God has already said yes to. Listen to this. When God says yes to something, God obligates God's own self to making it come to pass. When God says yes, God also adds the amen. When God says yes, when God calls us, when God pulls us into relationship, when God lures us into the divine work of God in the world, when God says you and you and you and you, I want you to be a part of the mosaic of the work that I'm doing, God is obligated to complete what God has started. I'm an artist. I paint. I'm an artist. I write poetry. I'm an artist, I play a clarinet somewhat. In my prayer room in my house, there is an easel for my art. There is, I, my journal is there, and I have a clarinet that's on a stand, and I have a singing bowl that I pray with almost every day. I sing my prayers unto God. And I'm in that room where all of this creativity is supposed to happen because I have begun some work in that room. And I intend, because I'm an artist, to see it to completion. But right this very minute, there is in my room on the easel a piece of canvas that I've been working on for about six months. I have painted on it. I've done certain kinds of brush strokes on it to texturize the canvas so that it's not flat, so that it's 3D. And I've stepped back and let the acrylic uh, dry, and then I'll go back in and I'll paint on it some more. And sometimes the pressure of my hand will tear the canvas, and I'll just paint in such a way that the tear becomes a part of the picture. And uh, I, I just kind of work the canvas knowing both how the canvas works and how the paint works because I'm an artist. I kind of get that. Anybody's an artist in here? You know, and sometimes that is, as an artist, the picture in my head doesn't quite translate onto the canvas the way I intended it to. But I don't necessarily give up. On, in fact, I never. I don't give up on the canvas. I just keep stroking until I get right texture, until I get the right color. I keep mixing the color. I keep managing the color until it becomes what I see in my head. I, in some ways, I'm partnering, if you will, with that canvas. If the canvas could talk back to me, if the paint could talk back to me, it might say to me sometimes, what's taking you so long? Uh, why are you waiting so long to come back to the canvas? I see you come in here every morning and pray. I see you come in here every morning and pick up your journal or pick up that clarinet, but you don't always come back to me. You don't always come back to the canvas. You don't always come back to the paint. What's taking you so long? I know, I, I, I sometimes have this conversation with God in my head. What's taking you so long, God? I mean, you began a good work. You gave me a promise. You told me you were going to do some things in my life. You promised me some things. And this does not look like what you promised. I mean, how do you lose your voice when you say I'm going to speak? This doesn't look like what you said, God. How do you call me to a ministry and it lays dormant for 20 years? How do you do this, God? It, it doesn't look like what you promised me. What's taking you so long? 
I, I can imagine that the canvas in my office, in my prayer room, kind of having that kind of conversation with me. Because if you're an artist, you know you are always in conversation with the art. It's never just you doing the work on the canvas. The canvas really is talking back to you. It's never just God working in our lives. It's us partnering with God to make come to pass the thing that God has said to us. It's never just God saying, I don't care what you think about what I'm doing. It is the ways in which the canvas calls out the best part of the artist. The one who began the good work in you will be faithful to complete it. I'm an artist, and I promise you I'm not always a faithful artist. I mean, I sometimes am sitting in my room, and I can't think of a, anybody in here, poet, I can't think of anything that rhymes or rhythms. I can't think of anything that makes sense. I start writing poetry, and I go, mm, that ain't it. And I scratch it out, and I go, I want to write about this, something that just happened in the world. And I go, Mm, and I give myself that five minute writing where you're not supposed to be thinking about what you're writing and I look at it and I go oh that's so not it but God who began the work in us never looks at the work that God has begun and say that ain't it God never looks at the work and say that something's wrong with the work God never looks at the canvas of our life and say, I don't like what I see. Because even the pieces that are not necessarily pertinent or seem like they mean anything to anybody else, God is working them into a great and exceeding glory in our life and making us look like something beautiful in the world. God begins a work. And the work isn't just so that we will look good. The work isn't just so that we will be on display in some museum. The work isn't just so that we can say, oh, God was working on me and God was working on my life. I, I had a friend, somebody say, say one time when somebody said, God is dealing with me. That only means you need to be dealt with. That's all that means. That's not deep. There's nothing deep about that. It just means you need to be dealt with. But when God is dealing with us and the canvas of our lives and when God is shaping the mosaic of who we are and when God is determining what our part has to do with the whole vision of God, God has a bigger vision than what we can see. God sees further than what we can see. And so we look at our lives and we think they're small and we think our part is small. We hear stories like our sister Prathea and we think, I could never do that. Well, how about you not being called? to do that do the thing that you are being called to do take up the space that you are supposed to be taking up do the yes where God is calling you to say yes because what God is calling for are people who will partner with God ride or die folk be about it folk Tell me what will work for you because clearly we got to get a phrase in our mind that will help us see that what God is doing on the canvas of our lives is a part of the grand vision and the beauty of God in all the world, our sister said. God is good. And I would say evidence to the contrary. We can hear these horrific stories and we can still say God is good. Not simply because we ourselves always experience goodness. Because human beings can be cruel. Because we can walk away from God. But because at the core of who God is and how God is, God is a creating, creative, painting, painting God good and what God is painting on our lives is good from the beginning in the beginning God created and God said good and then God got through creating some other things and got to creating human beings and God stepped back and said show sure enough good that would be a good translation of very show sure enough good it is us who does not, don't think that what God is doing is good in our life. We are not agreeing with God about that. Oh, no, no. See, you didn't hear what I said. It is us who decide that what's going on in our life is not good or that who we are isn't fundamentally good. That is not 
God's verdict. God's verdict is show love good. And I will take the parts of your life because of what I've done in Christ Jesus. I will take who you are. The pieces that are strewn all over the place. A good artist never wastes any material. I'll take the stuff that you think is throwaway. I'll take the stuff that you think is no good. I'll take the stuff that you think is shameful. I'll take all of that and I'll work it into a mosaic, into a picture, into a painting that will give me glory. The one who began the work is faithful, consistent, persistent, will take it all the way in like a pit bull won't let go because God intends to see the end of what is the vision of God for our lives, for our lives as a congregation, for our lives as individuals, for our lives as all of humanity. God who began the work is faithful. And how about all God needs from you is Yes. That's it. I know that you want something deeper than that. Yes. I'm never going to be able to answer why certain things happen to some people and not to other people. I'm never going to be able to answer why your baby died and my baby didn't. I'm never going to be able to answer why some people die in car accidents and some people don't. I'm never going to be able to answer that question. July 5th, when I walked away from a car accident where the car was total, and I pulled myself out of the car, and I have no scars, July 5th, 2012, I'm never going to be able to answer, except that I know that God said, when I said God spared my life, I heard the Spirit of God say, as clearly as I'm talking to you, I did not spare your life. I preserved your life, and there is a difference. And I'm telling you, God has preserved our lives to this day for the work that God has already begun. And all God wants from us is partnership. And partnership begins with yes. Say yes.